just can't write scripts like this. What a story, the fairy tale goes on. So here we go then, FIFA 17 is finally here and so is my Manchester United career. Welcome everyone and thanks for joining me. I'm sure it's going to be another roller coaster of a year with plenty of ups and downs and twists and turns. Just feeling so excited. What am I waiting for? Let's jump in. So board expectations, more in depth this year than previous FIFAs. There's a domestic success, continental success, brand exposure, financial and youth development which you've got to be keeping an eye on. You've got to make sure that you're hitting these targets, which the board have set out for you. The majority of those for Manchester United, of course, are critical. You can see I've been given a transfer budget of 102 million and the club worth just over 3 billion, the most on FIFA 17. These next couple of episodes are going to be focused mainly on pre-season, having a look at some transfers, some players that I could bring in to better the team, and also just setting up the team with formations and tactics. And then come next week, when the game is out, I'll be switching over to PS4 to uh, start our Premier League season, and I'll just take the, uh, the career mode series from there. Right, let's have a look then at some of the pre-season tournament invites that we've received. So let's, uh, let's go ahead with that. So what have we got? So Last America's Invitational, the first one we could set off to uh, to Brazil. We get a potential prize money of 8.6 million. And we could be facing teams such as Roma, Barcelona, Juventus. The rest, of course, are Brazilian size. I'm not sure about the club badges. I don't follow the Brazilian league that much. Whereas the Asian Elite Cup offering the most potential prize money of 10.2 million. We could play Napoli, Real Madrid, Bayern, Atletico Madrid and Inter Milan. And finally in Argentina the Champions Trophy we could play PSG, Sevilla, Wolfsburg. But you know I'm going to challenge myself in this pre-season and go for the Asian Elite. United will be flying over to Asia then to compete in this Asian Elite Cup. That's pretty much the same email that we got in previous FIFAs. We got shirt sales in our most recent board meeting. We set a goal to earn 170 million in sale from player shirts. Insane. That is a huge amount of money to earn. But then again, with the high profile players that Mourinho brought in, Pogba coming back to Manchester United, Ibrahimovic, just to name a few. And we've also got Mkhitaryan now in the side. Shouldn't be too much of a problem. Transfer market is now open. Our vision and expectations, this is just more of an in-depth look at what they expect of me as we've just seen on the uh, the start of this career mode. Picking Manchester United, of course, the majority set at critical. Uh, domestic success, we know how well the team does in the league and domestic cup that is for Continental. It's out in international competitions like the Europa League, which we'll be competing in this year. Brand exposure and youth development with the youth academy and so on. I certainly want to be uh, focusing a lot more on that this year as well. I know for FIFA 16 I did the whole youth revolution where I spent the whole whole of one season just playing young players against some of the top teams in England and Europe. Uh, and I certainly want to be doing that again. Maybe not so much, but the youth will certainly be involved. Now it looks like we haven't got much we haven't made much profit here. 156 out of pocket. Uh, we've made 16 million take it that's from a couple of players that we've already sold and we're down 173 so you can see with our transactions all the signings that Mourinho has made not sure why it's saying we signed Ibrahimovic for 21 million when in real life we got him on a free his contract came to an end at PSG 
and he came and signed for us. So I'm not sure why it's saying 21 million. His weekly wage, though, is 250. Paul Pogba, the world's most expensive player, cost Manchester United going by FIFA 17 career mode 83.50, but I think in real life it rises to 100 million. Mikatarian from Dortmund, 39 million, and finally Eric Bailly from Villarreal for 30 million. He's on 89,000 a week. We've got a couple of sales here. Victor Valdez to Middlesbrough for 13.5 million. Such a shame with that whole scenario with Van Gaal and everything. It's behind us now and Paddy McNair has gone to Sunderland for 3.3 million. And finally here is the transfer budget. Look at that, a Warchester of 102 million. I'm not sure if I'm going to spend all of that, but it's nice to know that it's there. It's something to fall back on in this transfer window. I was thinking about disabling it, but it's open. Or in the January transfer window, we'll just have to wait and see how things go. Let's just skim through the squad report. Let's see who I've got. Got a pretty good idea, of course, you know, David De Gea. But with United being an official partner to FIFA this year, I'm thinking that, I mean, that I can already see that they've added a couple of um, players that have been in United's under 21s now, under 18s for a few years that didn't make previous FIFAs like Dean Henderson. Don't recall seeing his name in FIFA 16. Axel Tanzebi, I think he did make FIFA 16 with the, uh, the update from the, was it the winter update? But you can expect to see him a lot in this career mode save. Regan Paul. Yeah, he was on FIFA 16 and FIFA 15, I think, as well. Joe Riley, another player that I'll definitely be using in this career mode save. Cameron Borthwick-Jackson, he's on loan at Wolves at the moment, but when he comes back, he's going to be in the team for uh, a game here and there. Timothy fosu Mensa, the Dutch central defensive midfielder. Look at those attributes. 71 overall already, and he's only at the age of 18. He's only going to get better. Jesse Lingard who will probably be seen and used more of a rotational player, especially with Mkhitaryan in this side. It's a lot of competition, and that's the thing Mourinho is having to deal with now in real life. Bastian Schweinsteiger, a player that's, well, he's kind of an outcast at the moment at United. I don't think he's even training with the first team. I don't think he's even training with the under-21s or the under-18s. Is he even still on United's wage bill? I'm not sure what's going on with Schweinsteiger at the moment. Memphis and Nanyanazai, players that are seen as fringe players at the moment. Wayne Rooney has been getting quite a lot of stick as of late in real life with some half assed performances. Hopefully that's not going to be the case in this career mode save. If it is, then, well, I'll have to be ruthless and drop him or maybe at some point move him on to another club. Now, one position which I think may need strengthening at some point is the striking position. Yes, we've got James Wilson, but he's on loan to Derby County at the moment. Yes, we've got Ibrahimovic, but if this career mode save is going to go on for, I don't know, three, four, five, maybe even more seasons, then we're definitely going to have to bring in a new striker at some point. Maybe if you've got any suggestions, leave them in the comments below. But for formation, now I'm not sure. In FIFA 16, what worked best for me was the more compact, more attacking, 4-2-3-1, and also the 4-3-3 attacking. But I do want to try new things for this year's FIFA. So maybe the 4-1-4-1, where we can have maybe Carrick, Schweinsteiger, or even Schneidlin in that defensive mid role. I know Fellaini used to be um, central defensive mid, but we could, for the time being, put Carrick. Don't forget, we've got pre-season upon us, so a lot of experimentation is going to uh, certainly be happening. Actually, you know what? What I'll do is change it to the 4-2-3-1 and we can put Rooney in the number 10. This will probably all change anyway for our first pre-season game. But for now, I'm going to pick my strongest possible team. This can be my first choice and then I can go ahead and, and create another team sheet for the reserves, for those fringe players for games such as pre-season or League Cup games or FA Cup games as the season goes on. So that is going to be about it for this episode. In the next episode, you can expect to, uh, to be seeing some transfer targets. I'm going to be going through those. I've got a few players in mind. Uh, and again, be sure to leave your suggestions in the comments below. They are certainly welcome. Because at the moment, it just feels as though I don't need to bring in anyone, if you know what I mean. Especially after the signings Mourinho made. And also, in the next episode, I'll be previewing the season ahead. That's it then for this first episode. Thanks for watching, guys.